How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. I want to do a little test today. We got full sunshine. It's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a perfect day to test out this all-in-one unit. This is from Browie. It's their PN-C300. has about 300 watt hours, 284 to be exact, and some different DC output, which we'll take a closer look at later with one 120 AC output. This is a cool unit, but what makes it truly unique is the integrated solar. So when you flare these out, this unit has 30 watts of panels built in. So in an ideal scenario, this should be good enough for our campsite to charge all of our devices, and you don't have to lug around other panels. That's the idea, but will it truly deliver to that? So we'll test it out today, see what we get in terms of average power throughout the day. But I wanna know, what is your guess? Let me know down in the comments. What do you think will average in terms of wattage? Remember, it is at 30 watts, and I'll show you actually how much irradiance we're getting today, and you let me know what your guess is. To truly see, is this an all-in-one unit that is just super handy, you can pack it in, and this is all you're gonna need, saving you a ton of space, or is it a little bit more of a gimmick? So let's jump into it. One of the biggest advantages is just the simplicity of setup. It has a kickstand in the back, fold out your panels on the left and right, and you're ready to go. Now let's go ahead and check and see what the irradiance is. These are rated at 30 watts, but that would be under 1,000 watts per square meter. So we're actually even more than that today, so we should get really good results, at least from an irradiance standpoint. And then also to make sure you're getting the most solar hitting your panels, if you're in the northern hemisphere, you want to face them due south, and then also the tilt angle is important. You can see a link below the video in the description, and that'll take you over to our tilt angle calculator on everydaysolar.com. You can just type in your city. We're close to Atlanta, so I'll just type that in, and you'll see seasonally what angle you should be set at, or if you're doing a ground mount for all year, you can see the best average. For me, I'm looking at about 44 degrees in the wintertime, so you can actually just use your measurement app on your iPhone or your Android, put it to the bubble level, and use that to see what what angle you're set at to get as close as possible and make small adjustments, again, to get the most solar possible coming into this unit or really any solar panel that you're setting up. All right, so I wanna give you a quick look. You're getting about 26 watts right now, so that's pretty good. You have a power button for the display to turn on and off. You have a DC on and off power button and then an AC on and off power button. Remember, whenever you have an er inverter that's gonna take your battery from DC to AC, you wanna keep that off unless you're using it because there will be losses associated to keeping that on. So just keep that in mind. So for our outputs on the DC side, we have a 60 watt USB-C and then 18 watt USB-As. So those are gonna come in handy for your devices. And any unit that's gonna be smaller like this where you're about 300 watt hours or really under one kilowatt hour, I do like to keep to DC, again, to save from inverting over to AC. And then here's some 12 foot outputs and an additional input. You can bring in more solar if you need it up to about 100 watts. And then we have a car cigarette lighter to finish out our outputs on the DC side. And then we do have our one outlet here, gonna go up to 300 watts. It does say it has up to 600 watt surge. But again, you're not gonna be running more than that. 300 watts would only last one hour for this unit. So you wouldn't want to go past that because it just drained the battery so fast. So from a camping setup, I think this is a very capable unit, but my use case would be charging devices, charging drones, laptops, some lights, some DC powered appliances, and maybe a little bit on the AC side, but I wouldn't be doing too much on the AC side. So let's let this guy go ahead and soak up some more sun and see what we average for watts through this integrated solar panel. All right, so we're just finishing up our testing and we had five hours of testing throughout the day with great sun during that whole time. A little bit of haze moving in and out, but really it's a pretty ideal day to test out the capabilities of this unit. Now the question was, is this just kind of a pipe dream? Can this thing actually be practical? And can we charge the battery of 284 watt hours or close to 300 watt hours with just the integrated panels? Now, if we just did some simple math and we said, if this can produce 20 watts for five hours, that should be 100 watt hours added to the roughly 300 watt hour energy capacity of this portable power station. So that should add 33% to the battery, correct? Well, when we check the display, 
I got some bad news. It actually only went up to 30% and only added 5% to the battery. Now, usually in this case, I would think that I left the inverter on and the inverter has a large parasitic draw compared to the battery capacity. But I checked multiple times and the inverter was not on. And when I go back to Amazon and I look in some of the review settings, there are a few different reviews that kind of talk to this concern where these panels just do not cut it and do not charge the battery. So the beauty of doing these type of tests and buying this actual product opposed to having it sponsored and sent to me and getting paid money is I actually get to tell you what's really going on. And for this product specifically, no way would I buy it? At least for this specific unit here, it failed spectacularly and is completely unacceptable in terms of the solar panel capability to charge the battery. The battery capacity of 300 watt hours is already on your low end in terms of what you can use that for. So I'm just not buying it, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So what would be a better option? Unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna get an all-in-one that's gonna cut it, at least from our experience with this one. So the EcoFlow Delta II is a much, much more capable unit. This costs about $400. You can get these on sale specifically right now for about $450. Now you don't have to go with the EcoFlow. You can go with the Blue Eddy AC180. You can go Jackery 1000, Anker C1000. It's all in that same category. These are a great bang for the buck. And there's gonna be a lot of different applications like backup for some of your appliances in your home all your different camping needs, and then grabbing a few 100 watt panels. Now the Delta II can bring in 500 watts worth of solar, so it's up to you if you wanna get bigger panels, but two or three of the 100 watt panels, such as this Renogy 100 watt, would be a good balance matched up with your Delta II. So that would be a different option. I'll put a few links in the description for you. Unfortunately, I love the idea, but at least the execution on this one, it is a complete failure. So thanks for joining me on this video. And if you guys are thinking about getting solar on your home this year, you can check a link in the description, which will give you a quick estimate on the size of system you would need to offset your monthly power bill. And then also what is that rough cost after the 30% tax credit? Or you can check out this video if you wanna take it on as a DIY project. And this is the complete installation of a 4.8 kilowatt system I did on one of my rental properties last year. So thanks for joining me in this video, and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.